Hello, hello, everybody. It is 8.06 p.m. Central Time on June 15, 2017. Already overseas. It is going into Friday, guys. So hope you are doing good. I'm jumping on here to do an update for my U.S. viewers who are going to be primarily concerned with the earthquake that just struck. May even make international news here when you see what happened. 4.5 earthquake struck directly inside the park at Yellowstone International Park. This is a now an international protected zone by the UN. Okay, so it's not just a national park. It is an international park. Everybody knows about this. And it's a significant sized earthquake. Now take a look up here to the west-northwest. There was a 4.8 earthquake that struck just a few days ago off the coast of Vancouver Island. That 4.8 has pushed to the east-southeast, causing a 4.5. So 4.5, 4.8 within a few points of each other. Uh, I'm going to bring over to the chat and just see what's going on. Check the USGS magnitudes list. Looks like it's larger. Okay, well, let's do that. Let's go check the magnitude list, see if it is larger or not. Uh, hold on, let me get a display capture open here. All right, and we'll go over and we'll check the USGS magnitude page together. So here we are inside the park. If you've ever been up there, it's absolutely beautiful. I guarantee you people there felt it. If they were in like a cabin or if they were in the lodge, they might have felt it. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it was a little bit larger. Look, we got some fives detected on the list. 5.1. Now the average on this and they, the way they compute is they'll take a few stations and compute uh, between them. But, you know, just seeing it, I'm going to have to say their magnitude might be spot on. It might be just a little bit larger than the 4.5. But the chances of it being a full 5.1, I would say, are less I'm going to have to go with what they have right now. And it would hold consistent. I mean, it would make sense if it was a few points higher, like if it was a 4.8, because we had a 4.8 off the coast just a couple days ago. So the 4.8 struck here first on the 10th. And here we are five days later. And the pressure has transferred, well, a thousand or more miles to the east on the edge of the Craton. But it actually already pushed all the way across the edge of the Craton, the first initial shock pushed all the way over to the eastern uh, portion of the Great Town on the east coast. Exciting all the fracking operations, 2.7, 2.6 similar sized earthquakes at Colorado and Texas fracking ops. 2.7s and mid-range threes going up to upper threes near four at the fracking ops in Kansas and Oklahoma. So, you know, look, it's been a busy week so far and we told you it was go time. Now, this isn't the sign of an eruption. I've got good news for you. Right next to this location, back in the 1950s, there was a 7.0 earthquake at Eden Lake. It didn't cause an eruption, and this isn't going to cause an eruption. This is a sign of pressure transferring across the edge of the plate. Now that you've seen a 4.5 here, we need to be aware at areas at the fracking operations again. We also need to let the people in South Wyoming, Colorado, and Texas know. Look, anytime you see earthquakes up here on the edge of here, you need to watch down to the south and to the east of this location. Let me again sum this up for you one more time. Just a few days ago, there was a near 5.0 earthquake off the coast of Vancouver. It pushed all the way down to Southern California, and it's already pushed all the way over to the East Coast. But the predominant body of pressure took five days to get down here to Yellowstone. So first shock went in initially right across the plate, now followed by the greater shock coming a few days later as the plate compensates with overall movement. Now I want you to imagine something. A greater force here off the coast is currently pushing the whole United States. And how much force do you think it would take to push the whole plate over to the east in a few days time? I mean, we're looking at the past few days worth of earthquakes. You see they're connected from west to east, fanning out and losing pressure as it goes across the plate and loses momentum. So what's pushing it? Well, we're getting back into this area off the coast from Vancouver down to California that's slow slipping. And that leads into a whole nother portion of a video that I don't want to get into right now other than to tell you the two plates are moving side by side next to one another in a process called a slow slip. Sometimes, not, well, actually a predominant of, of the time, the slow slips are accompanied by larger earthquake activity mixed in with the slow slips or at the end of the slow slips. 
So understand that's what's going on here in the United States. Elsewhere, really quick, I can tell you down in New Zealand, we saw a new 4.0 earthquake strike just north of the plate boundary, north of Wellington. And there's mystery reports of an erroneous earthquake being reported out here at Tajikistan, registering at four different stations anywhere between 8.7 and 9.1. Okay, so that is significant. I don't know if it is real or not, but it's another mystery earthquake. Another mystery earthquake showing up. This is like last night when the 5.1 showed up here and was on here for at least an hour or two. And we reported on it and talked about it in Italy showing up in Norcia. And then they deleted the earthquake and the Italian agency issued a statement saying, sorry, we made a mistake. Well, what are the chances the mistake would fall in the tiny little town that we were looking for a near five to strike. Huh. It's really, really interesting. So, you know, checking the other lists, we can go do that really quick. You know, I don't have anything else going on. Why don't we go over to the EMSC really quick and just see what they have on the list. Now it's scrolling by here really quick. Let me explain something that you might not normally uh, get when you're looking here on the screen. Right above my camera here, okay, there's something scrolling by. This is the EMSC seismologists page. And it's, you know, look, there's some earthquakes that'll show up on here that are obvious mistakes or not mistakes, but erroneous readings, maybe an explosion or some kind of rock slide or cave collapse or methane burst or something that's causing there to be a detection of an earthquake when there's not an actual earthquake there, maybe a miscalculation by a computer and so forth. Well, there's a lot of earthquakes that show up on here that are real that don't make it to the public. They put it up for the seismologists to study, but they don't want to report it to the public for one reason or another. Usually there's no reason given for why they don't report it to the public. Okay, just so you guys understand. So when we show you this page, we're looking at the magnitudes and you see some that pop up on here that are erroneous. Yes, we look into them and try to figure it out. But then others are spot on. So a new 3.1 just happened in Wyoming just a minute or two ago. Just so you guys understand. Hawaii 2.2. Those will show up on the feed most likely. All right. Oh, yeah, look. Hawaii's on there right now. So Hawaii just showed up. New 3.0 up here at um, Wyoming, okay, right there, just showed up. So they take the earthquakes off that feed and use them. So it's just a matter of which one do we want to study and which ones we don't, that kind of thing. Uh, that being said, one more time, new 4.5, 4.3 earthquake going up to 5.0 detected, but we'll throw out the high end on that. We have to keep watch on the edge of the craton down to the south and east. If you're in Oklahoma, things could go up a notch. I was looking for upper three. Well, the 3.5 hit. The upper three hit yesterday. Now we've got a new 4.5 up here to your northwest. I would say that's going to increase things. You can definitely expect a new swarm of earthquakes to develop out here at the fracking operations in the next couple days. And it's probably going to be pretty significant totaling the total size, at least magnitude wise, of what hit here at Yellowstone. So if you see a swarm of threes that equals a four, don't be surprised. Or if you see a four mixed in, don't be surprised because pressure has been reintroduced to the west northwest. What else do we got going on in chat real quick? Oh, check the other USGS list. I checked their lowball list. Yeah, I did check their lowball list. I sure did. Let's go check the USGS lowball list together. Let's go check the other lowball list. So there's two. Now, the lowball list is just a slang term I created for the uh, different ways of computing the magnitudes. We've got, uh, you know, magnitude local. We've got, So they usually go with magnitude local if it's available. Um, sometimes we'll do a, a body wave magnitude and so forth. I'm not going to get all technical with you. But just going down the list, you'll see there again with the different way of computing uh, the magnitudes, you get a slightly. This is the one that actually this might be the, um, you know, one that they wouldn't want to include because it would falsely give you an impression that it was too big of an earthquake. So if you got sixes on the list here, we would throw out the six and just as we would throw out the two right next to it, throw out the low end, throw out the high end automatically. That's just a rule I've created. It's not a geologist or seismologist rule. It's just something wise that I do, which is if I see an earthquake and I see a mega point reported and a very low point reported, I usually cancel those out because chances are it's not the ultra high end and chances are it's not the ultra low end. 
So, you know, a 90% chance it's not the high or the low end. It's a very, you know, unique chance that it's going to be very high or very low. So you go with the broad swath in between. Then you start to get into where are the stations, what's the, if you want to do the computation on the amplitude and the arrival times and so forth. I don't do all that. Again, I'm not even really qualified to do all that. I don't even think I could. And it doesn't matter to me. We look at the greater overall stations reporting, and I trust that the equipment is calibrated enough that they're computating uh, compu <laughs> making computations um, off that, and we should probably just do the same, okay? Technical explanation on that. I'm going to save this video now. Do not be alarmed. We're not looking for an eruption at Yellowstone. It will take something far greater, I believe, uh, in pressure-wise to cause any kind of magma displacement in the magma chamber. This is inside the park and is most likely felt by people who are indoors. And, uh, you know, look, with something this size, I know some people go into the hot springs over in Idaho. I'm just going to say it. I'm not trying to cause alarm and I'm not trying to hurt tourism. But you might want to be careful right about now with the hot springs and the other locations. Just because new pressure has been reintroduced. We go back a couple of years and the same kind of event happened. Yellowstone got hit with 4.0 activity, 5.0 activity at the same time within a few weeks, hit in central Idaho at the western portion of the Yellowstone magma chamber that goes over into Chalice, Idaho. And there was a local who normally hiked out there with his dogs, and they would no go, go to a spring and jump in, and the spring they jumped into normally was tempered enough for them to cool off after hiking, or at least enjoy it, and it was boil it was beyond boiling, it was super boiling, it was you know, these super hot springs. And um, they apparently, you know, it was bad news for them, all right? You can imagine what would happen when if you jump into a super hot spring, not knowing that it's super hot because normally you think it would be temperate. Well, that happened because of an increased pressure. Well, it's increased pressure again. You got a bunch of people at the park right now because of the time of year it is. And a lot of people do do the hot spring stuff down to the south at Jackson Hole and all the other places. I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm just saying be careful. Because these kind of things, just a little burp, a little burp from that magma chamber in heat would be a you know, noteworthy increase at the geyser fields, at the hot springs, at the remote, more remote locations that people aren't used to you know, normally uh, having to deal with this at. So again, keep watch now. This is go time. We are at the June point, that point where we're getting into June 21st, which we told you there's an increase that happens. And now I think it's so obvious. Now it's hitting in the United States. Maybe people will wake up to what's going on. Don't feel ashamed to tell people to be on watch on the West Coast and the Northwest or in the Midwest when this kind of stuff's happening. Look, the deep earthquake event that's happening with all the deep earthquakes around the Pacific over the past couple days. The 7.0 earthquake that just hit yesterday down here in Central America. I mean, 6.9. Okay, they downgraded it. But 6.9, 7.0 earthquake. Or the uh, 6.3 that just hit over here at uh, Lesbos Islands over in Greece and knocked down those buildings and so forth. Okay, it's an increase. It's an increase around the planet. And the increase is due to what? It's due to the tilt of the planet, guys. As we're going into the longest day of the year here in the Northern Hemisphere, there's a certain tilt aspect that's related to this large increase with the deep earthquakes. The deep earthquakes cause shallower, larger earthquakes to spread out around the entire plate. So we're in the middle of the event right now, and they keep striking. The deep earthquakes keep hitting over and over again. So just keep watch on those as well because they tell us what new pressure is coming in. So if you see a new round of deep earthquakes, it means shallower, larger earthquakes pressing around the plate within days. Okay, so wake up to my people. Okay, this is go time. This is where you would normally contact the people you know on the West Coast and in the Midwest and say, hey, just to let you know. There's been a new near five up at Yellowstone. Don't worry, it's not going to erupt. Smiley face. And, you know, I know you live right down here in Colorado. Just be on watch. It could be 4.0 activity that comes in your way. If it doesn't hit you, it's certainly going to hit Oklahoma. They're fracking up, so be ready. Hey, by the way, I hope you're having a good day and afternoon. You know, I mean, just when you tell people, don't try to freak them out. Tell them that they're sandwiched between two locations. The United States is under serious pressure right now due to other events around the plate. It's not alarmist. It's just obvious. Okay? Peace out. Much love. <laughs> and uh, have a plan. Be prepared.
just in case. Don't be scared. So in order to not be scared, you need to be prepared. And being prepared means looking and knowing what's coming your way, being aware of what's going on around you at any given time. So you see sevens popping off, you see Yellowstone lighting up, you see a bunch of deep earthquakes. That could be like pretty much the signs, all the signs you need that something larger might be coming in the next several days. Not just at the locations on the west coast of the U.S., but we're looking for a very large earthquakes to be developing out over here in the West Pacific in between all of this mess. So if you watch the update, I've got an update over on my channel if you're a new viewer here. Um, I've got an update over on my channel. I do it every day at 4 p.m. It's about an hour long, and it fully recaps everything around the planet, what we're looking for, why it's happening, and so forth. So if you're curious and you really want to know, you can go take Geology, Seismology, YouTube 101 with Dutch Sense and relearn everything if you already learned it. If you haven't learned it, then you're going to learn something new. Okay? Peace out.